African Americans from across the country flooded New York City's Harlem neighborhood, leading to a cultural explosion of books, poetry, music, and art that's now collectively known as the Harlem Renaissance. As special correspondent Jared Bowen from WGBH in Boston reports, a photography exhibit now traces the evolution of one of the nation's most recognized neighborhoods as it continues to evolve today. It's part of our series on arts and culture, Canvas. The 19-teens saw the start of the Great Migration, when millions of African Americans moved from the South, many to the North, and to Harlem, which became an oasis from oppression, especially for artists. Stephanie Sparling Williams is the exhibition's curator. The art was important then in creating a new visual lexicon for African Americans against histories of dehumanizing and degrading stereotypes and imagery in the American popular imagination. At the Addison Gallery of American Art, we find representation of nearly 100 years of life in Harlem, mostly in photographs from the museum's collection. The show takes us from the 1930s, just after the Harlem Renaissance, to today. I see vibrance. I see a people who have been through so much and were given so little and have made this out of it, this miraculous, this place. A lot of people describe Harlem as a cultural mecca. This is where a lot of the socializing happened, was out on street corners or in front of shops. The Harlem of the 1930s was a place reeling from the Great Depression. And Williams sees in the work of both black and white photographers a place of fortune and despair. You see a tension between um, Harlem's working class, the unemployed, and then also Harlem's upper and middle class um, citizens, stuck within Harlem, but all trying to pick up the pieces. By the 1960s, Harlem had become a hotbed of protest in America, fueled in large part by its community of artists, says Judith Dolcart, the Addison's director. I, mean, I always see artists as active agents in the culture, so artists have the ability to change the culture as much as anyone else. They have a point of view, and they are putting a point of view out there. In the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, Harlem's streets were host to civil rights marches and later black power rallies. It brought in energy that Williams says courses through these photographs. I describe it as a buzz, the sound when you get off the subway of just people in the streets. And I think that's captured throughout the exhibition, not only the built environment and people, but how both come together to create the social life of Harlem, the lifeblood of the neighborhood itself. Today, Harlem tells a different story, the results of gentrification. A way of life is changing, as it always has, but now, so are Harlem's people. It comes into sharp focus through Dawood Bey's series, Harlem Redux, which he shot in 2016. When we see um, the development, the construction, we see the different ways in which space is being claimed by other bodies, particularly white bodies. The show ends on an epic piece by Kahinde Wiley, who created this instantly famous portrait of President Barack Obama. The subject, regal and wielding a sword on his equally mighty horse, was straight off 125th Street in Harlem. It's carrying along this tradition of um, self-determined imagery, but also there's a tension, right? This, this tension between the art historical canon, this, this genre that African Americans would never find themselves in. The black body was never portrayed in these heroic um, paintings that depicted valor and masculinity and virility often. But Wiley shows us that the black figure is no less powerful, no less masculine. And instead, there is glory in a neighborhood that has long encouraged that in its residents. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jared Bowen of WGBH in Boston.